first of all, thank you for having me on your show. It's been a long time. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, really good to speak to you. And um, yeah, look, it's a, it's a good squad. It's a good squad. It's a, it, uh, it's definitely. I think there was a lot of. Um, you know, maybe one or two positions, especially at number seven, um, whether they take Milder, uh, um, you know, or Pretorius. Um, but I think that the squad that I've certainly that, that has been picked, I think everyone pr probably expected that to happen. Uh, I thought Reza Hendricks was very unlucky not to make that squad. Um, so, uh, look, I think Markram has shot the house down. I mean, he, he has just played outstanding cricket in South Africa this year. He has absolutely uh, slammed the door down to get into that team. Um, so, yeah, unlucky for, 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 for Reza Hendricks. Uh, but I, I think at the end of the day, Markram really showed, um, you know, what class he has. And he's been scoring runs for, for Hampshire over here. You know, that, that's a, it's a very good, solid top order. And uh, uh, the, other, the other one, obviously, is, is uh, at the moment, which is an injury scare, is, is Dale Stain has gone back from the IPL as quickly as he got there, as quickly as he got home. You know, so uh, a shoulder again. Um, I hope it's not too bad. Um, but uh, you know these 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 times and before a World Cup, you know, sort of hold your breath and your key players who've got who're carrying niggles. You know, just hope that they make it and come through it, and there's nothing serious. Uh, it'll be a great shame to miss him because South Africa really, if you look at all the bowling attacks and the teams that have been announced, you know, South Africa definitely rank up there with one of the best one-day attacks that's going around currently. And that leads me very nicely to my next question is many people are of the opinion that in order for South Africa to do well, they're going to have to rely very heavily on their bowling attack because people feel that there is seems to be a vulnerability and a brittle, you know, brittleness about the South African top order, especially. Would you agree with that? We do you concur with that. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, I you know. I think, uh, to be brutally honest, um, I, you know, we, we haven't uh, uh, covered ourselves in glory in, in any of the one days so far that uh, it's always been a bit of a scrap. Um, certain players not, uh, not, not coming to the party. And I think Hashim Amla has struggled uh, a lot. You know, and I know he's had a, his dad has been very, very ill, so he's, he's, he's not taken that very easily. Um, so, uh, big emphasis on South Africa's top order to score big runs. Um, you know, we've got England in the first game. That, that doesn't come uh, any more difficult than that to start the World Cup uh, against the uh, probably the favourites. And uh, everyone would say that right now, um, Team England is, is the favourites to win the World Cup uh, in, their, in their backyard. But there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. You know, Alex Hales has pulled himself out of this World Cup now. Um, so uh, through through uh, 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 drug related issues, um, so he's he's probably not going to play, or we, uh, we're going to re be replaced. Um, but uh, but yeah, look, it's uh, it, 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 there's no doubt that South Africa would be talking about um, their batting and how important it is to, to score the big runs, um, and then giving that bowling attack every uh, bit uh, to 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 take teams down so um but yeah i you know look it's that's uh, any coach uh, we would have spoken about that i mean um, otis gibson would have spoken about that uh in in, in great depth and uh uh so yeah uh, i think uh there, there'll be a lot of pressure on this uh, south african top order and you speak of alex hales uh, that's very unfortunate for england but who do you replace him with do you bring james vincent to the side what do you do there uh look i think vince is the probably the obvious choice um uh, the other the guy that's been scoring a lot of runs has been Sam Northeast. Um, also, bo both Hampshire players. Um, there's so many good players going around at the moment, you know. Um, um, but uh, in, in the white ball game in the UK. But yeah, I think I think Vince is definitely that everyone has been talking about uh, that should replace him. Um, so uh, you know he's a he's a one heck of a player. Uh, he's been he's been doing very well last year in the Royal London Cup. He's been doing very well. Also the shortest form of the game, 2020. He's been doing excellently last year. Uh, so yeah, let's wait and see what uh, what the Eng England sele selectors come up with. A lot of people have been talking about pitches, AD, in the World Cup, which will obviously uh, provide seam and swing. Now, 
I'm going to put a little uh, something out there and say I'm not so sure the pitches in England are as SEMA friendly as what they would have been, for example, back in the 1999 World Cup. So, you know, many people are saying you should make sure that you have your best swing bowling attack. But to me, the pitches seem to have become a lot flatter and you're not necessarily going to see as much uh, done with the new ball as when you were there in 1999, you know, with the pro tiers. Would, would that be a fair call? Yes, trust me that uh, we've started early year. That uh, uh, we, we've had an early kick off this year here. So we've we've been playing since the third of April and fourth uh, fifth of April. Sorry. Um, so all the Royal London Cup games at the moment have dished up scores close to four forty, three sixty, three eighty. The ball has done absolutely nothing it, apart from going to the fence. Um, <laughs> And it has been it has been brutal. Uh, seriously, the wickets have been absolutely brilliant, and and that's what that's what teams will face. Um, so if you're coming over here thinking there might be a bit of swing, and if you you know they they will be with the two new balls, they, there will be a touch of swing, but the pitches have been absolutely brilliant. Um, so and it's also a 99. We used a juke ball. Uh, and, and, and there was a little bit of seam and there was a little bit of swing, but they went soft quickly. They reversed beautifully. This is not the case this time round. Um, this is going to be uh, this is going to be tough, tough for bowlers here uh, to to, um, um, to 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 stop the flow of runs. You know, so you got to take wickets. You got to be very aggressive mentally. Uh, I mean, if you got to, and there's some great attacks we're going to be witnessing in this in this World Cup. So all the skills will come to the fore. The different strategies. Um, so my message to all the teams out there is. Um, the bowlers uh, rest easy because um, you know it's not it's, it's not going to be well rest well because it's not going to be okay. that easy over here. <laughs> Trust me, there, there's lots of runs to be had and and, and it, it's just really sliding on magnificently well. Um, let's just talk World Cup cricket in general. Something which you have had some incredibly happy times and then of course some very sad times as well. Your your first World Cup was in 1992. In Australia, you arrived as a bit of an unknown quantity in terms of a team. So, you know, yourself and a couple of other South Africans would have had the privilege of playing a bit of county cricket. But generally speaking, you're a bit like Zimbabwe, uh, 20 times better, but in, in terms of unknown quantities, because there was no internet in those days and, you know, you couldn't really study players all that much. Um, but you did remarkably well as a team. Now, I'd like you to explain the differences of the 1992 World Cup where you were very unfairly treated by the weather. In the semi-final, had you won that game, you would have gone through to the finals uh, versus 1999 where once again you got to the semi-final and then unfortunately due to that misunderstanding between yourself and Lance Klusner between the wickets, that also saw you not make it through to the final. I mean, both of them would have been devastating for you. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I think the first World Cup, we went there with nothing to lose, really. I think, um, you know, we when we sat down as a team and for the first time in our very first team meeting, you know, Kepler and Mike Proctor basically have sort of outlined, you know, we, we go there. First of all, people would have no idea about wh who we are and uh, a, lot, a lot of people would not have seen us at all. So that's that's our, our our first advantage going in there, and and we we must see us going there with nothing to lose and just play, and and really giving it a crack as as much as we can. So, yeah, it rained for you know that unfortunately you know we, we, with Douglas Lewis at some point it was going to catch someone out. Um, you know, we, I think, in that semi-final wasted way too much time in terms of, or, or lost too much time, not wasted, um, because we bowled way too many no-balls and wides. And, you know, that was something that we just couldn't control with that, that white kookaburra. Uh, it was difficult. And uh, at the end of the day, that time and, and the, the, those no-balls and wides that we bowled really cost us eight minutes. You know, it rained for eight minutes or nine minutes, and that cost us... Uh, just that one over or, or so that, uh, that that cost us the game and um, yeah, twenty odd twenty odd runs of one ball is a big hit. So, <laughs> but uh, look, we we learned a lot from that, and uh, you know it was a lot of stuff that we took out of that World Cup, and and we grew every four years. And look, ninety nine, we uh, I think that uh, we'll we'll probably go down as our best team. I I, I would say that. 
categorically that we had the best team in that World Cup without a shadow of, it, of even hesitating about that. It was a, um, a, a side that was seriously well balanced with lots of all-rounders. Um, we we went into that World Cup with with great form. It was the um, World Cup that we you know, we won the Champions Trophy before that. We went in there as world's number one uh, team uh, in all formats uh, at that stage, Test and One Days. Um, so, um, and we played like that. You know, we we really we really with a, obviously a hiccup here and there. We actually mentioned Zimbabwe earlier on. You know, we lost to Zimbabwe. Um, at Chelmsford, um, you know, we got simply outplayed, and um, it's a. I, I just felt that on, on that day we didn't give Zimbabwe enough enough respect. You know, we just pitched up there thinking that we we got to get this game done and dusted, um, and we didn't. And uh, look at the semi final was was yeah one of those heartbreaking days that no one will ever forget. Um, uh, so uh, it, it was one of those cricket mishaps that, uh, unfortunately, myself and Lance was involved in that uh, will go down and will never be, uh, never people will never stop talking about it. Um, um, but that's just the the World Cup pressures that that it brings, and who knows what we will see in the 2019 World Cup here in England, and what it will throw up. Um, there's bound to be some major disappointments. Um, and you expect that in World Cups because of the, the, the brutality of the pressure uh, that it brings. So, um, but also it will bring up some amazing, uh, you know, it brings the world together, it brings uh, uh, people together, and uh, I can't wait for, for, for it to start. I think it should be a, a one heck of a, a spectacle. I totally agree with you. I, I just very briefly want to go back to that mishap in the semi final of the 99 World Cup. I, I would like you, if you can, to describe the the atmosphere of the dressing room afterwards. I, I tell you why I say that is because Hansi Cronier, uh, in an interview, the late Hansi Cronier, said that when he had got back from his press conference uh, and obviously interviews, I mean, that must have been jolly tough for him to try and handle. And he got there and he noticed that not one of the players in the dressing room had made any move to actually get into their, you know, their casual clothes. They were pretty much sitting as he left them. I mean, it it must yeah. have. It, it just just try and talk us through that if you can, and 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 try and explain the. Was there many words spoken in the dressing room? Were there tears? Was there anger? Sadness? Um, I think a bit of all. Um, the well, you know, you don't have to mention the word sadness. I think it was pretty much like some you know family member passed away. It was sort of, sort of that sort of feeling. Uh, and yes, no one really moved. You know, I. I went straight away. I went. I went to the physio room, which I knew very well, and sat down there and closed the door. So uh, all I uh, knew when Hansi was back from his um, press conference, when he got everyone together and someone fetched me from there, and you know, sort of described how proud he was of every single one of us. Um, you know, for him to have, I don't think there would have been anyone else who wanted to speak, really, apart from him. You know, I think he was strong enough to to deal with that. Um, you know, it was a, it was a, well, horrific finish to a game with, with that we never lost. Um, and, um, you know, that we out of the World Cup in, in that sort of way was uh, pretty disgusting, to be honest. But, um it was a. It wasn't a great dressing room. It sort of calmed down a little bit later. I remember Steve Waugh and Glenn McGrath coming to speak to me. Um, you know, just saying that it wasn't meant meant to be. I, I didn't deserve to be in that situation. Um, but to remember that it is sport and it make you stronger. You know, so uh, it was a, a very, very, very tough time to deal with. I think afterwards was the worst for me because when everyone left. Uh, I went back to Warwickshire. Um, I basically uh, um, spent some time with uh, with with Bob Wilmer and, and trying to get it all back on track. Uh, so it wasn't an easy time for me. It wasn't an easy easy time for me for a number of years after that because uh, uh, you know wherever you went, you got some either support or or abuse. You know, so um, it um, it certainly wasn't a, a pleasant time at all. So, um, but you know, these are the these are the things that 
that that that happened in sport. I'm not just using that game as an example. You know, there's that's that was like missing a penalty in the World Cup semi final. Um, you know, so um, and it was you know you can understand and have sympath sympathise with someone taking a penalty, and this is the kick that matters, you know, and then you miss, and then. You know, it's it's, uh, it's 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 brutal. International sport is brutal, and those moments are are, are tough to handle. And and it's how you come out of the other end of it that that makes you the person you are today. So, yeah, look, I um, I can relate to that, and I can help other cricketers in my coaching now. Um, you know, come over major, major disappointments like that uh, in in the future. Oh, I think you've been absolutely magnificent in the way that you dealt with it. And as you say, it took a lot out of. You as a player, sadly, in 2002, we saw you play your last test match at the Wanderers, which was an incredibly sad moment for those of us who followed you throughout your career. But just to conclude, Alan, you've played under some fantastic captains, uh, Kepler Vessels, Hansi Cronier, uh, I'm sure a couple of very good Warwickshire captains as well. Who, who was the standout captain and why? Oh, um, there's no question. Uh... Uh, my brother Hansi was definitely the, the, and I call him my brother because we grew up together. Um, because um, he was, without a shadow of a doubt, he was born to be the captain that he was. Um, to, uh, straight up, I saw this coming when he was only fifteen. Um, how he handled uh, being under fifteen captain, being being under seventeen and eighteen rugby captain, and then under nineteen. Uh, great college first team and then uh, Craven Week captain uh, prior to that. So he was destined for that. There's no question about that. Um, you know, he had this amazing calmness. Uh, the way he spoke, he, 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 he was just a naturally born leader um, that had the respect from, from, from the moment you walk into a dressing room. He had that aura about him that uh, made people sit up um, yeah, immediately. Uh, waiting for instructions, you know. So um, it didn't take, and I'll give you a little example of uh, in a test match where we had batted all day, he would just put his spikes on. And when he put his spikes on and uh, walked out the door, you'd know that we were going to do either have a game of touch rugby or we're going to be sweating for the next uh, 20 minutes. So uh, <laughs> he didn't ask any questions. He didn't ask you to come. He didn't ask you to come with him. You just knew that you had to follow him. And that's uh, the whole team walked out the door. And um, we did 60 shuttles or whatever. And he just said, thank you. Um, and <laughs> that's the sort of person he was. And that's the sort of, uh, that's the sort of um, aura he had about him, that, uh, that, that you know what was coming. And you simply knew that you could follow this bloke anyway. You know, he captained you in a way, and he spoke to us in a way that you, he was always followed. So... Uh, as simple as that, he was just an incredibly talented and uh, natural-born leader. And Kepler, in his own very, very tough manner, also uh, managed to get the best out of you, but in a different way. Yeah, he was, he was definitely tougher. Yeah, he was uncompromising. Um, you know, um, he expected you, if you were hurting, to not, to not sort of look for sympathy, but get on with things. Um, uh, but Hansi was the other other way. He, he would listen first and try and give you one or two options. Where Kepler wasn't really that guy who was prepared to 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 listen to your 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 so called excuse. Um, and uh, which was, you know, in a lot of cases, was an excuse because you were really sore and you were almost in a in a way that you couldn't get on with things. So. Um, um, but yeah, look, Kepler was uh, when, when he was he toughened everyone up. He brought this tough culture from Australia, um, and uh, he simply was. Uh, he, he look, don't get me wrong, he was a damn good captain. Mm. Um, but there's a there's a big difference between those two.